There we go. Ads are playing, so I guess we're going to go live right after this. And there we are. All right. How's it going, everybody? We are here and we are live. We have a bunch of stuff to talk about today. We got the Kobo stuff that has been making waves. We have the uh, Onyx stuff that has just been announced. And we're going to be checking in with the community consensus of the remarkable announcement about 10 days after it has been announced. So, yes, um, let's kick stuff off with Kobo because that's. That's kind of talk of the town right now because people are getting it in their hands and um, it, some people even before us as as review partners. So, um, yeah, Mike, uh, let's hello. How are you? Yeah, I'm good. Yes. Um, so in case people just like aren't aware, Kobo uh, announced a couple weeks ago, uh, sort of when we did our last like YouTube live, we didn't hear about this. So in, in the weeks after our last live segment, Kobo announced two new e-readers and uh, they took pre-orders for them for like a couple, about a good couple of weeks before uh, they started shipping them out um, this week to customers. So they did two devices. They did a second generation Libra and they did a totally new SQ called the Sage. And the Sage, I think, is the better of the devices, primarily because of this, the hardware specs. It has an 8-inch screen. It has like a quad-core processor, so it can really handle uh, audiobooks, ebooks, PDF files, anything that you could really kind of throw at it. And so, you know, um, high resolution, great specs, solid internal storage. And everything and the Libra 2 is no slouch either um, you know single core processor um, but yeah I mean the, the big draw behind these is that you can finally buy and listen to Kobo audiobooks right on the device and there's a few caveats you can't sideload in your own audiobooks uh, but you can buy them from Kobo or if you've subscribed to their you know, audiobook service, you can uh, listen to previously purchased Kobo audiobooks. So um, yeah, it's, it's, it's solid. And I think the one nice thing about the Sage in general is that it's compatible with the Kobo stylus. So it's similar to the Kobo Ellipsa in the respect that you can freehand draw, you can take notes, solve math equations, but you could also write inside PDF files, you can write inside ebooks. But Again, these you can't do that with sideloaded ebooks. You need to do this with like PDFs that you downloaded from Kobo or EPUBs that you downloaded from Kobo because Kobo has like their own like proprietary EPUB format. It's called KEPUB and it's just like their own encryption system and stuff like that. It just sort of like proves that you bought this from Kobo. So uh, you can only sort of draw on these books. So uh, Sage expensive, Libra less expensive, but they both have manual page turn buttons. So I know a lot of e-readers have sort of abandoned that where they sort of just exclusively rely on touchscreen interactions on the screen, taps, gestures, swipes, and so on. And so it's really nice to have two flagship devices from Kobo that actually have physical page turn buttons because you can hold it in one hand and, you know, just press the buttons and stuff like that. And uh, both of these kind of hype that they have the G sensors. So you can actually hold it landscape and you can hold a portrait and 360 degrees. So the experience can be asymmetrical if you'd like it to have that kind of ledger on one side, or it can be like a full landscape and landscape looks really good on the eight inch because you, you got really wide margins. You get fit a lot of text on the screen. Now the Libra is a successor to the Libra H2O and they've dropped the name H2O because almost every e-reader and their mom now has waterproofing capabilities. You don't need to say it anymore. The yeah. Sage is a little bit, uh, pe people are like torn between because people are calling it a mini ellipsa because it borrows the uh, active capacitive layer that you can take notes. But people are also saying, oh, it's a Forma too because it looks like the Forma. So it's kind of, there, there's no official statement on which one it is a successor to, but it is spiritually inspired by the Forma because of the form factor. It has the two buttons that the Forma kicked off. Actually, the Oasis kicked it off, but for Kobo. And it is a successor kind of in the same 
same world as the ellipsa because it has the note taking layer. So it doesn't need to be defined. We're just saying that people are confused because they're like, is this the forma? It's like, well, officially stated, no, there could very well be a forma that just comes out of left field from uh, Kobo's Chinese production plant, like the ellipsa and the Nia did all kind of surprise, surprise. So we don't know, but right now these are the two we've been handed and they're both amazing. Now, we have had some reports, because I know we got some techie people here that watch our um, lives. Some people are saying you can use other pens on the Sage and the Ellipsa. This is not a blanket statement. There is no list of compatible pens that Kobo says, yeah, you can use this one from Fujitsu or this one from like, you know, Wacom. No, there's no official pens. There are some crossovers. I think, Mike, you and uh, your guys over in Van discovered that you can use the uh, Microsoft Surface pens on it. Yeah, because they just like have like a different style pen. Like and we we right. test we tested like thirty different pens and like nothing like is compatible. Yeah, yeah. We so even tested the Lamy pen, which this bad boy works on absolutely everything. We tested both the regular polarity by just tapping the screen and the reverse by tapping the eraser. So you tap that. We've even tested with these super proprietary bamboo pens. We've tested with, we got a lot of pens here. We tested literally like 17, 20 pens. Nothing works on it. There's a couple crossovers with like an active capacitive pen from, uh, you know, this slate or the Microsoft pen, or like, I think someone said it, uh, one version of a Galaxy S pen works on it. So to qualm all that for you technical people, no, no other pens officially work on the Sage. And you need the Kobo Ellipsa pen because it has the two buttons and those buttons are very important for highlighting and uh, alternative um, frequencies with the pen. So the, the active capacitive pen. So anyways, you need the pen to take notes on it, but it does still give you the whole experience of the basic notepad, the advanced notepad, the calculations, uh, you know, putting in your graphs and making shapes and stuff, geometric stuff. So we're going to cover all that in the review. Actually, uh, in the office, the guys are doing a lot of the uh, A-roll and writing some scripts and stuff for us to say so we can piece everything together when we go into the office to do some work. So that's what I have to say about that. Yeah. So, I, you know, in talking about the stylus, I think it's important to note that when you buy the Sage, uh, it doesn't come with a stylus. So yeah. uh, if, if note taking is something that is important to you, you have to purchase it as like an optional accessory. And speaking of accessories, the Sage has a four pin uh, connector on it. And that's primarily used for the power case, which yeah. is something that, um, you know, virtually no other company has done. And the power case works like a sleep cover, but it also has its own internal battery on the case. So you could like, you know, take the, um, you know, take it out without necessarily bringing the USB cable or a wall charger. You know, if you're going to the park or if you're going to the cabin and stuff um, and you're using this for like days and drawing and reading and stuff like that, it's nice to be able to have like a case that will basically double the battery life. And so you don't have to recharge it all the time. I mean, the, the benefits of an e-ink screen on, on these devices is long battery life in general, but you know, they traditionally say you'll get about three to four weeks of battery life, you know, for doing average things like reading a book a couple hours a day, taking some light notes, reading a PDF or something like that. But, you know, there's people from all across the spectrums, like, you know, people will read six to seven hours a day on it and that will like have the battery life. So if you're reading all the time, um, yeah, it puts it to sleep. It charges it. Uh, it's a supplementary battery. And then Kobo also just sells the traditional sleep covers as well that yeah. will just put it to sleep. And, it, and they're cheaper, you know, cheaper by like 20 bucks. Uh, the stylus, I think, is like around like, you know, 40 to $60. So it's, it's not like a huge investment. The power case is their most expensive uh, you know, accessory that they have, but you could just buy something cheap if you want. But I like the ability to automatically put it to sleep because I sometimes just don't click the power off button and just put it into sleep. So, right. and you know, the longer it just like sits there. I mean, you know, for me, I don't like having the screen automatically turn off within an hour or two hours. I just keep the screen totally on. So in the settings menu, with most e-readers, you have like a screen timeout 
a type of setting where you could say, you know, after a certain duration of time, the, it'll automatically turn off. You know, if I'm reading and I put it down, I go and make a coffee or something like that. I don't want the screen to automatically turn off. Then we hit the power button and stuff like that. So I like it, the screen always on. The nice thing about sleep cover is that it automatically puts it to sleep and wakes it up. So it's, it's easier to like open and close it like a real book than it is to like, you know, because the power buttons on the Sage and stuff are on the back um, instead of being on the top of the device. So, you know, if you're going to like, you know, my phone, you know, if I want to wake it up or put it to sleep, I just press the button on the side. Easy. Whereas like Kobo and stuff have them on the back. So you have to like click the back. And if it's in a case, it's not easy to like turn the power right. button on because it's inside of a freaking case. Yeah. Uh, we're going to be doing some comments and um, uh, questions kind of live because we don't want people to drop off before their question gets answered. We'll just kind of touch on a few. Uh, Gregory has said, um, uh, I, actually, a lot of people have said, but Gregory Pollan said that, uh, you know, there's always this little bit of a divide between people like, oh, I like the flush screen of Bezon Sage. And, oh, I don't like the recessed screen on the Libra. And or some people say the recessed screen has less stuff in front of it, so it looks better. You can't have both the high end and low end devices just have both flush screens because then you lose a little bit of like the selling features you know you have to have that little bit of an eco feel on one unit and a little bit of more premium feel on the other or else you're just going to kind of cannibalize your stuff if you give people too much of a confusion if you make two things that look almost identical one's just a tiny bit smaller by one inch but they both have flush screens same design features people are going to be like huh why is it different right but you got to have a little bit of a divide in your own product line to give people a choice and say oh i want the ultra premium sage i want the little bit lower h2o they're both great but that's why they do that they don't just make both flush because then you need a little bit of definition as to which one is which yeah i mean the the recess screen on the libra 2 is not like recess like recess screens like five or six years ago no it's, it's not some it, exposed it, panel you, you scratch it and it starts to bleed like you're pushing on a calculator yeah i mean it's not, like it's not what it is like sunken screen and bezels like five or six years ago were like an inch or are like you know half an inch the one on the libra is like less than half of that so it, it's really not that noticeable but they do they do have like glass sub subset traits it's not actually glass it's like it's like a glass substitute. Um, I don't know exactly what it is, um, you know, uh, on like a scientific scale, like what are the components that go into like the glass that Kobo is using versus like Gorilla Glass or, you know, this and that. I don't know the, the components that they're doing, but what I do know is that, you know, when we did the unboxing videos for like the, the Sage and the Libra 2, you noticed that there was reflections on the screen because of overhead light or studio light projecting it on it. And that's one of the downfalls of no matter what type of glass that you're using, glass is glass, you know, it reflects. And so if you're outside, you're going to get glare from the sun if like the sun is like over you as you're sitting yeah. there and reading and stuff like that so that's just something to bear in mind but most e-readers these days all have glass there's very 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 few that have like a you know a sunken bezel the, you know basically sunken bezels help protect the screen if they don't have a layer of glass on it because if yeah. it was a flush screen and bezel device it would be so easy to just scratch it but if That's it's sunken right. it's like a little bit added layer of like protection so i'm not a fan of glass on general on e-readers just because they reflect they it, it, whereas like the e-paper screen on itself absorbs light so yeah. you know it's like this weird dichotomy between reflecting light with like a glass based screen and absorbing it with the e-paper display on the screen but the yeah. e-paper just screen doesn't have a chance to absorb the light because the glass reflects it so it sort of defeats the purpose of an e-paper screen uh, although you know you do get the tangible benefits like the long battery life and stuff like that and it's easy on the eyes and stuff but if you're just reading it at home or if you're going to like a park or you know as long as the sun's not right above you you know you should be fine or grab a shade uh, or something like that usually okay with uh sun yeah and we do have a teardown video on all of this where um a couple of the guys in the office slowly peeled back every layer 
with us and we were like, okay, is this, is this okay? We're going to break anything. And they coached us through it. And um, yeah, we did a teardown video, showed you all the layers. And even if you have an exposed screen, there is still something on top. It's glued down from the factory. I wanted to mention here, we got a little bit of a, uh, uh, in our field, at least a little bit of celebrity joining us here today. Morning coach is actually in the chat. Um, we talk about your videos a lot. Morning coach, you're, uh, you're, you got some good stuff there. And we always kind of chit chat around the water cooler, so to speak of your stuff. Um, he just asked, uh, I'm going to buy the Onyx products to use and review. You guys are faster delivery question mark, or should we order from Onyx? We are a distributor of Onyx. Of Onyx. Um, so whether you order from us or order from them, it's pretty much the same thing. We sometimes throw in some bonuses. We give you guys some styluses and stuff like that. But and a free case. Right. Because we're a distribution partner, um, Morning Coach, it does not matter where you order from. So whatever you feel comfortable with. Uh, let us know. We have a little bit more of a, um, and it's not a negative thing whatsoever, but as you know, Onyx is located in mainland China. So with that, it is a little bit harder to get through to them. It's a little bit harder to do warranty concerns. It's a little bit harder to just communicate. Whereas we have offices in five different countries and we just, it's a little bit more, uh, easy to talk to us. Facebook live chat. We got like 40 guys that have all of the same, uh, logged into goody reader corporate account. So it'll just go ping on everyone who's uh, working that day and everyone can just customer service the heck out of that. So, uh, yeah. Um, thank you for stopping by morning coach. Uh, thank you for watching our videos and we watch yours and, um, yeah, it's, it's good stuff to see the whole community coming together. So, uh, good question. And yes, thank you. Yeah. It's good to see more people involved in reviewing e-readers now, you know, that there's, there's, yeah. there's numerous, you know, people that have been doing it for a couple of years now. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, it, it's great to, to draw attention to these sort of like devices and do comparisons and stuff like that. So it's good to just see like more YouTubers doing this Absolutely. sort of thing as like either their primary career or is just something to supplement their income. But uh, yeah, I mean, it, to elaborate a little bit more on Onyx, yeah, customer service is like a big issue because um, they don't really have very many people. And, you know, if you have a warranty concern, good luck hearing from them for over like a month or if you have like pre-sales questions, generally they don't, they're not that great about doing it. Although they do have like offices like in Europe. So if you live in Europe, it's easy to uh, not pay that because it's shipping like within Europe and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, through us, we have the same prices as Onyx. Um, so, you know, if they discount products, we discount them as well. You know, they send us like big boxes every couple of weeks. So we actually have like these products like in stock and stuff. So, um, yeah, I mean, um, we're just, we're an official distributor for them. So, yep. you know, uh, the nice thing is that you support us, you know what I mean? Yeah, for so, sure. You support your boys, Peter and Michael here. So uh, and that that's actually leads us to another thing. A lot of people recently, because of the Sage and the Libra, obviously what we're talking about there. Oops, sorry, my phone just went off. Um, people are saying, well, I'll just order from Kobo. And yes, absolutely. That is what we recommend because a um, little bit of an inside info, but you can't really get too big of a discount with Kobo unless you order a lot. We're not going to say the amount, but it's a lot of products. So if you are within your capabilities of ordering from Kobo Rakuten, absolutely go for it. We recommend that. It's a lot easier. If you are out of area, if you live in Israel, Germany, Papua New Guinea or something, we do have all the items on hand we can ship to you. So it's again, it's our way of just servicing you guys. I mean, we, for example, we don't make a whole bunch of money shipping to India because it's very expensive. But if you guys really need one and you're in India and you're like, oh man, there's a billion, billion plus people in India, maybe they want a sage. Well, we can assist you with that if you can't order from Kobo. So that's kind of why we're here in our um, uh, store retail division. We have our news division, store retail division, videos, all the stuff we do. We do help with that. So um, I know the guys at the store, the shipping department that would absolutely love to send you guys a sage if you want one. So yeah, a little bit of a pitch there. Yeah, I mean, with the Sage, pre-orders were so strong that it's yeah. actually sold out. So uh, Kobo in Canada and the U.S., uh, they it just says sold out. It doesn't say when it'll be back in stock. Uh, yeah. Walmart is Walmart, at least in the States is the official distributor for Kobo e-readers. They don't carry them in the stores anymore, but you can buy it online. And they said that pre-orders are available and they'll start shipping in basically in the middle of November. So, you know, if, if Walmart will have 
more in November 15th. Chances are that's when the Kobo stock will be replenished. I did notice that in Indigo Books and Music, which is the largest book selling chain in Canada, they still have them in stock online, but they don't have any available in stores. But if you live in the US, you can buy from Chapters Indigo and yeah. it will ship to the state. So you can pay in Canadian dollars um, and have it shipped to the States. So a lot of people just weren't aware that that happened. So whether you live in Canada or the States, you can order it from Chapters Indigo and they'll ship it to you no matter what, you know, yeah. in, in North America, at least excluding Mexico. So um, let's talk about uh, the Onyx book stuff because that's, is, that's big. Yeah. That was a yeah. huge announcement. It was a, uh, I think a 16 minute um, uh, announcement and uh, we talked to Onyx and they said, yeah, well, you should put it on your website because I think they have 9,000 subscribers and we have over 100,000. So it's just, it's a little bit better if we just kind of re repost it, so to speak, because then more people see it. Um, it was uh, it was a it was a big announcement and um, lots of stuff. It was a little bit confusing because, and I'll let Mike do the tech specs in a second, because if you watch it, you can go on YouTube and watch it. If you um, watch it, they only talk about the air too the whole time and at the very end the gentleman presenting is like you can also find these features on the lumi and the um the x and we're just like wait so the whole wait it's it's the same it's 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 the exact same but it's a bigger screen and then mike and his team was like no that that's not right and they were bouncing back and forth with um onyx with some questions and uh get some clarification from pr and i'll let michael tell you about a little bit what he uncovered yeah, so what Peter is making reference to was like a live event that they had like on YouTube. Um, it was basically just one guy talking and some, you know, uh, animations that they had sort of like beforehand. Um, so yeah, it wasn't really anything too special. They never really showed any of the other products in their portfolio. But I think that the, that the biggest product actually generated like the most comments on YouTube uh, plus like our website. I think we got like about like 60 comments on our website and like a hundred plus like on the video uh, on, on YouTube. But yeah, I mean, so the Lumi 2 is probably the best 13.3 uh, digital note taking device that money can buy right now. Uh, it's the only 13.3 that actually has a front light and color temperature system. So you have the white and amber LEDs. So you can just have the white LEDs on for the front light display. You could have the color temperature lights on, or you can blend the two together. Yeah. Um, and I'm going to interrupt you, but I need Sorry. your help on this, Mike. Someone just asked, and this this was confusing me too because of that announcement. Does the Lumi 2 have 64 gig or 128 gig? That was yeah. one of the confusions. Yes. As Uta. So, Utsav. yeah, it has 128 gigs of storage. So, Onyx had some discrepancies with their um, tech specs. They yeah. actually listed them wrong. And um, I had to actually. During bring, the announcement. Oh, geez. Yeah. So I had to bring it to their attention for them to fix it. So um, here are some things that you need to know that's really sort of on the Lumi 2. So it's using the e Carta 1250 display. Um, so this is the panel that's using. So it's using e Carta and e Mobius, which makes it very lightweight. But um, suffice to say, e Carta 1250 increases the clarity of text by about 30%, but also halves the latency of stylus interactions. And the only really devices that had this in the past was the second generation Fujitsu Quaderno, both the A4 and A5, That's right. uh, and um, the Kobo Ellipsa. So these are like very, very few things in the industry are using this. And this is Eink's like latest technology that they just unveiled like earlier this year, like in 2021. So it's still considered like cutting edge tech. Uh, suffice to say it's about 207 PPI and um, it comes with like a stylus, but uh, e -Ink has, or sorry, Onyx has developed a new stylus. Um, so you're no longer having that cheap, like um, 
you know, $5 stylus that just made of plastic with like plastic nibs and stuff. It's been totally redesigned. So it has like buttons yeah. on the side now. It has an eraser. Uh, it's like this hexagonal like shape. It's it's actually pretty cool. And, and you know uh, what? I, I want to talk about that really quick. I'm just going to tangent. That's funny that you say that because for about a month, um, and we've been a distribution partner of Onyx's for years. We were like, we're doing our top 10 stylist video. The guys at the office are getting all the info. And they kept talking Onyx and said, so no more pens for the year, right? They're like, nope. And then the next day it's like, okay, we're almost done our top 10 list. No more pens, right? No one has any more pens, right? We asked everybody. Onyx is like, nope. So we do our top 10 list. The next day, oh, we got a new pen. So it's like, I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> I'm sorry. We did the top 10 list for the year. It, we tried our best to gather all the info and they withheld some information. And now we have a pen that may be really good, but we don't know where it lands on the scale. We know a lot of people have been buying pens from us. we got the new X pens. So we're going to have to see how good that pen is when it comes out. So yeah, just wanted to put that out there. Uh, yeah, I'm just seeing yeah. if I could like find like a picture of it. Yeah, uh, we, we got it on the site. I think you you and your guys added it yesterday. Um, it's it's got I think it has like a little eraser gap, kind of like a remarkable plus pen, the remarkable two plus pen. Uh, yeah, uh, I'll, 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 I'll post it when I can. But uh, in any case, um, yeah, the specs of this device are, are pretty cool. Um, it has a Qualcomm Snapdragon 662. Uh, it's an octa-core CPU, but this is the same CPU that's actually in uh, the Note uh, 5 and then uh, the Air 2. Air 2. Um, yeah, so this has six gigs of RAM, which is probably the most RAM ever found on an eNote. Uh, 128 gigs of internal storage, which should be enough for anybody's PDF and EPUB, EPUB collection. I don't care how many things you have. Uh, 128 gigs is, you should have enough space That's for that. a lot. That's a lot. Unless you're putting movies on there, which you can do on these new devices. You can watch movies in X mode. If they still have an X mode, we haven't tested it yet, but... Yeah, they, you can you can watch videos on these now. You know, watching videos on E-Ink was like what a couple of years back. Now it's it's kind of commonplace. You can I know it started on one of the Hisense phones. So it was like oh my gosh, a video. And then Onyx employed it on a big screen, and it's like now we're kind of a little bit desensitized to it. We're like oh yeah, you can watch videos. Okay, now it's a question as whether an e-reader can watch it well or not on any of the modes. So that's what it's kind of become. Yeah, so other key features, USB-C, a 4300 milliamp battery, and a fingerprint scanner to lock your device. Mm -hmm. uh, all the new Onyx products have Android 11, which is pretty well the most current version of Android found on e-ink devices. Uh, it retails for about $879.99. Pre-orders start mm -hmm. on on October 27th. So that will be like the date that our listings on the store will go live um, and you'll be able to place your order. Uh, it'll start shipping out around November the 6th. Yeah, you know, that that that's a decent price. And obviously I know we sell them, so I'm saying that, but it's, it's honestly a decent price. If you think about it, when the S1 came out by Sony, that was like- The, the digital paper. The digital paper S1. That was like fourteen hundred dollars back in two thousand and thirteen. So now we see the Fujitsu sitting at seven hundred and eighty bucks, and now we see this Lumi, which is uh, be able to use its uh, a secondary monitor under its own battery power. You don't need to plug it in like a Dasun used to have to. And now we're seeing them sub nine hundred bucks. It's an expense. It's expensive, and so was um, and Dasun released a an e reader that was a ten point three, and it's nine hundred bucks. But with the Lumi, you're, I think you're getting better value. And uh, Morning Coach just chimed in and says the Lumi is probably my top ranked technical reader. And I, I agree. It's I think we ranked it as um, top of last year, I believe. And uh, the guys are doing a um, top 10 e-notes of the year and a top 10 e-readers of the year and a top 10 color. So I'm thinking the Lumi is going to rank pretty high. The Lumi won last gen was such an all-in-one device. It's not even funny. It's It did everything it did and does everything so the two is just going to be just better than that and um i'm excited that's going to be that's going to be crazy to me too uh yeah i mean you know insane. our speaking of like the top e readers of the year there's still a few that haven't been announced yet yeah that's like, why we held off all these guys that are like nope we don't have anything coming out and it's like 
I think you do. And Mike just dropped that Tolino is going to be bringing something out. Uh, yeah. So uh, they're sending us a review unit of the Tolino right. Vision 6, which is basically their rebrand of the Libra 2, mm. uh, except it has like uh, different specs. So they've, they've yeah. changed like the specs and stuff like that. Um, <coughs> yeah, I mean, it's only really relevant if you speak German, whether you live in like Belgium or the Netherlands or all the stores are like Aust uh, Austria and stuff. <laughs> yeah, all the stores I think are specific to a lot of European countries. Like there's no North American stores loaded on there, correct? No, it's yeah. it's all German stores and That's stuff. Right. Although you it's still a good unit. Yeah, I mean yeah. It, it's for for people for people who live in like North America or Western Europe or you know English the English speaking world probably the Libra two makes the most sense. But if you speak German, you're an expat, you're a student that is studying abroad. You know this is the type of device that you want to buy. Um, so the Note Air two is probably more of the. Of, of an interesting device that has the same design principles as the note uh uh sorry the the note air one you know yeah. it, it's similar it's uh, the except same it's, shell it's the exact yeah. same shell yeah well it's supposed to it's supposed to be thinner and lighter which is supposed to be actually oh, so excellent uh, is that is that confirmed because in that little trade show they said it was the same shell because if because the th why i say that is because the air is one of the only devices from onyx except for the nova air that it's made out of a block of aluminum so in order for them to make it thinner and lighter they're going to have to completely not use it and make an a, a, an all new cast of aluminum you can't just squish an aluminum thing down so i know this is this is this is just what they told me oh so if it's thinner they, and lighter than yes they are using a new shell if that's like what they're like they haven't like even disclosed in the tech specs how much it weighs and how thin it is but they that's what they told me like in an okay. email then, uh, yes, we'll see so um yeah i mean it, it's sort of like the original Note Air, you know, in terms of resolution and PPI, yeah. uh, it does come with the new Onyx Book Pen Plus, um, and uh, yeah, it's the same Qualcomm Snapdragon. Uh, it has four gigs of DDR4X RAM, so it has yeah, and sixty-four gigs of internal storage. So uh, better processor, more RAM, uh, and uh, more internal storage. Uh, you know, basically. It just has Bluetooth for listening to um, music, whereas, like, say, the Lumi 2, it has dual stereo speakers. So, um, you know, if music is important to you, the Lumi 2 is, like, the better buy. Um, yeah, so this is going to retail for $4.99, and uh, the Note 5 uh, is sort of like their flagship sort of device. Um, what is the most important thing? Yeah, I mean, it's sort of the same as like the Air, except this one has speakers as well. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, um, the Air is sort of like the cheaper device, uh, whereas this will retail for about five sixty nine, so like about $100 more expensive. But you are getting like a little bit more value out of it in terms of like speakers and resolution and, you know, I don't know, all that type of stuff. Uh, so there is some other things of note uh so all of these new onyx book pro like products are going to be shipping with a new firmware um update so um i think it's going to drop around like the first of november or so for all these like new devices uh so when they ship uh, they'll be shipping with like the new firmware. So basically, they they changed the Neo Reader ebook software. So the document layout engine now has better support for faster page turns for side loaded EPUBs, text, docs, files, and they introduced a new feature called Books Drop, which allow you to easily transfer books and notes from your device to your PC, and then from your PC to your books device. That's so it's right. it. That's what that was. You, you'll be able to transfer it wirelessly. So you don't need to actually hook the, the device up to like your computer anymore yeah. to transfer devices. It'll do it like wirelessly. Um, like the, uh, like, 
or even worse, you need proprietary software like Sony Remarkable Fujitsu, where you have to download the actual app and sync your device and enter the passcode and then enter the code on there and register it. And oh man, I hate when that happens. Yeah, uh, the note taking app has also so new, uh, has some new improvements to help make it a better creative tool. There is a customized uh, pen and brush slots. So you can establish like a specific pen, a specific like size of the pen and then save that. So you don't have to keep selecting like pencil um, I want the three thickness, I want this, and then change it. You could actually save those, um, you know, the, the, the types of pens and pencils that you like, you can save it to the toolbar now. So you don't need to keep changing it on the fly, which is pretty cool. Um, there's also um, uh, a vector quality export option now. So you could export it as like vector art, and then you could uh, further edit it with like, you know, professional design software. Uh, finally, they have reduced the latency and improved stylus interactions with OneNote, Evernote, and WPS. Uh, so it makes them now extremely uh, viable as an alternative to Onyx's own drawing app. I know a lot of people that love OneNote or Evernote uh, to draw on. They use it on their iPad or they use it on other devices and they like it. So uh, Onyx has optimized those uh, three apps to work on it. It's similar to uh, them doing uh, optimizations to the Kindle app, where if you install the Kindle app for Android on an Onyx device, they physically remove the, the animated page turns when you read Kindle books. So it'll just like flip it, the, the page automatically yes. without the fancy animated page turns, which kind of suck on eating right. devices. So if you have a previous generation um, Onyx book, so you have the Air 1, uh, the Lumi, uh, the Note 3, the, um, this update is going to be available for your devices around like the end of uh, November. So yeah. you'll be able you'll be able to install this on the previous gen devices too. So it's just not for the new um, generation devices, but they'll port this to like you know the other devices pretty soon. Yeah, um, <clears throat> that's also good. They yeah they have their little priority of uh, releases. Someone said there's also a paper like screen surface that is all new now. Uh, this is, you know, a little bit opinion driven, but at the same point, completely true, because all we do is this. Any company that basically says we have this new feel, it feels really like pen on paper. It's it's not. I'm sorry, but it's not. If you're using glass and you put something on top of it, you're getting close. To be honest, you're getting close, but you're still writing on a window. It's still writing on, you know, it's it's like it's not the same. The way to get actual paper feel if it's if it's that important to you and the bells and whistles don't matter and you want a paper feel there's only a handful of units there's the mimas by boyu which is 2018 there's the sony stuff first gen but the pen you need to charge there's the remarkable one or there's the quadrant which is this which is discontinued which is discontinued have to find on ebay or something or craigslist if someone has oh. one or there's the new fujitsu line the Fujitsu line doesn't have a glow light, doesn't have audio, so there's a lot of limitations. But the Fujitsu line is the only one. It's the hand to whoever. It's the only one that doesn't use a glass screen. They use a plastic flexible screen. So all these guys that are saying it's a paper-like feel, well, it's, it's good, but it's not going to be the same. It's It comes down to the compound they use in the nibs, and Fujitsu's got that on point. It comes down to, like, the screen surface, and, like, the Remarkable One had that good synergy with, like, the marker signature. That's probably one of the best is the Remarkable One in recent times. But, it, you know, it's it's we're doing where it's the best of a bad situation basically we're do we're doing the best with what we have and yes the new onyx stuff is said to be very good the 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 nova air the small one was the first one using this all new technology you get a little bit of that grit a little bit of that super high grit sandpapery type of feel but if you put that on the screen like this it's just it just slips off you know it's not the same it, we're nitpicking because that's our job but if you're asking then no, it's not going to be a true paper on pen feel. Only the Fujitsu is going to give that. Only the Remarkable One's going to get that. Yeah, uh, but it's I'm, not bad. 
And what Peter's making reference to is that the new Onyx line has a screen, uh, create a screen protector it's, that's it's built, built on. Down, though. Yeah, yeah, so it, it's it's set up from the factory, that's and you right. can't there turn you it off. And it's supposed to basically, um, in, you know, reduce the friction of writing on on pure glass because yeah. some people who write on glass, uh, the pen nib slips and stuff yeah. like that. Because like a lot of nibs are plastic, so plastic on glass it slips unless you're sort of like using a better quality type nibs that have like graphite on them or something like that, yeah. which, which inherently have a bit more friction. But yeah, I mean, it remains to be seen how this performs like in reality, like we'll have to do our reviews and Onyx just sent us like the Lumi two and the note air two. Uh, yeah. um, so we should be doing unboxings next week of that, uh, as well as next week, we'll be doing a review of the Sage and Libra two. So and the, uh, the, 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 the Kindle paper white, not the signature will come out. Uh, at the end of October. Weeks. Yeah. So yeah, October, weeks, October 20, 20th, 26. I think uh, it's 20th. Well, they, they said they sent us an email and said 26. So whatever you okay. set up for them to send one to us, you, you did it. So, uh, yeah, we, we're, we're going to get that. So we have a lot of stuff on the docket. Um, and we have this, uh, interesting thing you'll see on YouTube as well. Um, it's called the M five stack. It's a little five inch programmable Android thing. I'll just landed today. No joke. Uh, some people, well, no, not some people, a lot of people are talking about the not so elephant in the room, the remarkable, tiered subscription disaster <laughs> catastrophe whatever you want to call it you've already heard my take on it i did a little video of it um over 200 comments on the video alone uh not to mention all our facebook stuff michael and the news publication and everything like that but 200 comments alone and i don't think there was more than a handful of people saying oh i might still pay I, we didn't look through every one of them but the consensus was that it's ridiculous on a brand such as remarkable obviously amazon and apple and trillion dollar companies and all that mumbo jumbo can get away with something like that because there's value there's prime there's you know airdrop all this stuff i don't know apple i'm sorry and mike can you know, chat after this but on a company as such as remarkable that has taken their list of features and saying okay all these are free everywhere in the world we're going to take this many of them and make people pay for them and then just just the hat just the note taking will leave free it's like mike i haven't heard well i've heard your take but the people haven't heard your take on this mike so lay some ground on them That's well before i talk about the remarkable subscription service this is probably a good time to get you guys to join the video reader, oh, uh, video reader <laughs> subscription service you can click the join button that's like yeah. on our on our video and uh, you get like special emojis next to your name, like uh, Ace of Base and uh, yeah. uh, oh, a few yeah. other people. You get like uh, little emoticons there. Uh, you have like um, custom emoticons that you can use and stuff. And right. uh, when we have contests, you have like more than one entry. You see, um, that's the thing. We do that, but we give away $700 colored note taking tablets for free. So, and you, you know, that it's a little bit different because we're giving you we're giving you an added thing we're not it's it's it's, it's 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 yeah it's optional like in all it, of our know. videos we don't hide behind a paywall we don't make you pay we don't have any secret videos you know you can watch all of our stuff we don't charge anybody for any of that and paying for the subscription is basically just for the free bows you're not you're and the people who are not paying you're not missing out on anything you get all the goody reader stuff base no money we don't charge you ever yeah, yeah. all yeah. of our news like like Publishers Weekly, the bookseller, um, you know, um, there's so many like uh, uh, even like uh, Digitimes, you know, it's all just paywalls, like upon paywalls. And like we don't have any paywalls on our news None. website. We don't have it like on any of our videos. Um, you know, you know, you guys know us like, you know, we've been like doing this stuff since like 2008. Yeah. So like if you like what we do, you know, just considered like clicking the join button, you That's know, right. it's like a dollar 99 a month to like five 99 a month. It's just like supporting your boys. Uh, yeah. but any, but remarkable is not supporting the boys. Um, <laughs> they are, uh, we reported on this before they officially announced it. Did, like, like, before. yeah. So, uh, basically, um, uh, 
they released some beta firmware and this uh, subscription service was baked into the firmware. They actually had three initial subscription services paid, um, you know, and they only officially announced like two. So basically uh, Connect Light which gives you all of your notes in one place and unlimited cloud storage on your remarkables uh, that costs about four ninety nine a month. Um, Connect is their highest tier membership, and uh, you know basically unlimited remarkable cloud storage, but also gives you uh, Google Drive and uh, Dropbox integration. But they also have a handwriting conversion, uh, screen share. <laughs> Did you? A bunch of stuff fell down. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, I'm coming from the Japan office of uh, well, my house. I'm not into the office yet. It's only 9 a.m. here, but I'm in Japan right now, and we get a lot of earthquakes here. I think we just had one because a bunch of stuff just shook, but sorry, Mike. <laughs> Are you okay? Oh, yeah. Well, just like a bunch of stuff fell down from my uh, office desk here, my home office. So, sorry, continue. <laughs> uh, yeah, so basically $4.99 or $7.99 per month, and that's U.S. Um, so... If you are an existing Remarkable 1 or Remarkable 2 user, you get all this for free for life, so you don't have to pay for it. It only right. applies to people who get a Remarkable today. You know, they get a Remarkable 2 today um, and stuff. So, um, so I of your think personal opinion, man, like, what do you think? Like, you know, just, just talk about it. Because you heard me. We wanna, everyone wants to hear what you have to say about it. Okay, I just wanted to give people a sense of what we we're talking about. Yeah, know? yeah, for sure. So um, I think that this is a good move for them. And I'll tell you why. Basically, e-reader, if you're in the e-reader business, and this includes like e-notes and stuff like that, the vast majority only make money on that initial hardware sale. So Remarkable for existence only makes money if you buy the Remarkable or you buy accessories or you buy this, you know, um, a stylus or something like that. They only really get one sale out of the users. And the most successful companies are the ones that actually sell services along with that. So um, Kindle. Nook, Kobo, probably the most successful brands in North America. They don't charge a lot for their devices because they sell audiobooks, they sell ebooks, they sell Amazon, Kindle Unlimited. They have their own self publishing platform so they could offer millions of books written just by like indie authors. So they could sell their devices a bit cheaper because they are it acts as a gateway to their services, whether it's unlimited services, whether it's this or that. So Remarkable is basically has realized this, that they are going to, you know, that they only made the initial sale of customers. And for a financially viable business, they have to keep on selling. They have to, you know, they have to sell 100 units a day in order to meet their quota or 1,000 units like a month or something like that. I don't know how many they sell because they're a private company. They don't disclose sales or anything like that. But, you know, selling services, uh, for better or for worse, is a, a, the right move for anybody involved in the e-reader business. So you could, of course, sign up for free, but you don't have cloud storage. You don't have like, um, you know, Google Drive and Dropbox or, you know, um, any of the powerful features that are common on other devices for free. But, you know, at least Remarkable's trying something. I agree you know? they're trying something, yeah. But, I, you know... And you make, I agree with your points. Absolutely. I mean, you sell a device and then that's it. You're like, okay, we'll buy, you know, Susan from New Hampshire. That's it. Right. But what everyone's saying, Mike, and that's why we have hundreds of comments saying the exact same thing. You're not getting anything else. They didn't create new stuff so that you can get it by paying. They're taking away stuff and making you pay for the stuff that was already there. That's what's happening. And I know if, you, if, you, if you're a Remarkable user before, you get it all for free for life and they're giving you discounts, but all those little bonuses aside, the inherent nature of the way they're moving from this point onward, from here onward, is you got to pay for the stuff that other people can do and that we had already given you before. Now you have to pay for it. Yeah, that's, well, that's what it is. So what they told me when I, when I reached out to them is that 
the features that you get on both the light and the normal plan, they will change over time. So they got to first see, well, is this like a smart move for the company? Obviously they're, they're going all in on it. So yeah. whether they, they cancel this plan, like, you know, whether they're treating it as like a, a beta test remains to be seen, but they will introduce new features going forward. So this isn't just like what they're doing now. Uh, this is what they're going to be doing in the future. So they said that they're going to be introducing new features for their, you know, the, the cheap plan and the most expensive plan. They're going to be like developing new things. So it, like you said, they're taking things away and now charging for them. But over time, they're going to be introducing new things that right. weren't available on the Remarkable right. at all. Yeah. That I think, th yeah, then it would make sense. Yeah. Yeah. Like, what are you mean, talking about? That's good. Yeah. And I mean, you got to look at like a lot of popular brands like Onyx Books, like Boyu, like, um, you know, um, th there's, there's so many uh, like Fujitsu and stuff like that. They, they don't make any money off services. They just make mm. money on hardware. So the, it's a challenge for businesses like that. Um, the only advantage that, you know, say Onyx Books and, and Boy You Have is that they're their own OEM. So not only do they make their own units with their own factory production mm. lines and they hire, they hire staff and stuff like that, but they also provide white label services for other company like uh, the the Nor the Swedish company Storytel. Wow. Uh, they are uh, an Onyx book client since the very yeah. beginning. So Onyx Books makes the Storytel e-reader for them. So that's like maybe something that a lot of people didn't know. But yeah, I mean, uh, that's how they're able to make supplementary income is to make devices for other companies. But a lot of smaller companies like Remarkable, they're not in a position to do that. Right. So um, even Pocketbook has a small, you know, uh, an ever growing digital bookstore that they charge for books. And that's only because they have books that people want to buy by famous authors in whatever region you're buying a pocketbook. So, you know, more people are realizing that device sales on their own is not the way to go. You yeah, need to no, offer, sure. you need to offer extra reasons to uh, make a distinction between device A or device B. And I mean, yeah. that's, that's why the Kindle is the most popular e-reader on the world because it's that's the most right. fully featured. It has the most options. It has the most books. It has the most extra programs and nobody else can come close to that. So, you know, and it's uh, got the name recognition. You, it's like Kleenex and tissue. It's like jacuzzi and hot tub. You think, you think e-reader, you think Kindle, everyone in the world is going to know that uh, a bunch of people, everyone just chimed in and they all agree with you, Mike. But the thing is, the underlying thing is that you make all the right points and it makes sense. But the end result is that it's on the remarkable two and the remarkable two isn't remarkable. And that's what everyone's saying. They're like, maybe like a hundred dollars a year, uh, you'd get any, you know, raise some money to make a remarkable three that has audio, that has glow light, that has just super simple things in the end, after paying for all of this, whether it's a beta test or not right now, whether they're just caring about uh, VCs and venture capitalists and investors and not caring about the end consumer, the, the end result is that you're getting a device that doesn't have any features. You don't even get a pen with it. And once these little discounts and stuff are over, you're going to have to pay monthly fee. So that's the thing is that once you get this thing in your hand you're like yeah totally radical and then you do have it, yeah, a guitar riff and now you have it and you're like oh well well i'm not, you know this guy can do google play and this guy can do this and this guy has glow light and this guy has audio and now you have this thing that you can't do that on i'm not bashing remarkable as i said in the video before i, I love remarkable it's great but not to rip money out of my credit card every month so that's what people are saying like yeah, I mean, to be honest, Remarkable is not doing the right things. Like, um, I never wrote this in my article, but there's so many things that they could be doing that no one else has been doing, like yeah. ha um, introducing a, a premium template a store yes. for your Remarkable, where oh, yeah. paid, paid users will have access to like premium templates, both like uh, non-interactable ones and yeah. interactable ones. So what I, what I mean by interactables, some brands 
um, have like a calendar app, like Super Note and Fujitsu have like these like calendar apps where you can click on a day and then all the times put on and you could like, you know, take with your pen, like, yeah, exactly. You type at the keyboard or you could be like, you know, 9 a.m. meeting with Peter, uh, 10 a.m. meeting with Tolino, you know, uh, this and that. And then you, you know, minimize that. And then on that calendar date, it just sort of like lists the things that you have like for appointments and stuff. It was remarkable, it was smart. They would just introduce like premium templates as like, a, you know, whatever subscription level that you have, you have access to maybe premium interactable templates on their most expensive plan. And then non interactable ones like uh, specific backgrounds, like, you know, everybody has like college rules. And, like you know, yeah. yeah, exactly. If they were smart, they would ha have like 100 of that 100 yeah. different ones that you could do, right. like, you know, the equivalent of college rules in another country, or uh, just different ones that you could just like click and just, yeah. you know, they would just install on your device. If they were smart, they would just do backgrounds. I mean, template backgrounds, you could just download for free anywhere on the internet, but if they optimized it for the That's, remarkable yeah. two or remarkable one, it would be like something like super good. And it would be like very distinctive, like in the marketplace. So, you know, there's some free advice for remarkable. And uh, I think uh, Michael, you and I were talking because of the uh, huge influx of pens that have been coming out lately. Remarkable is going backwards with their pens. In fact, they had some of the best pens on the market they were they were so innovative and they had like little nib canisters and tactile press downs at the back they got rid of one of the best pens i think we've seen which is the um the marker signature they got rid of that and now they have two pens that aren't included with the device itself and they don't have anything on them one has a little eraser and all the nib canisters and all that special stuff that made them so in interesting are gone. Whereas well, companies like iReader, I'll, I'll just finish this up. Companies like iReader release like three new pens and they're all like aluminum core designs with all this like fancy stuff. So it's like digital stationery we see with like iReader and iFlyTech and uh, Lamy collaborations and uh, Fujitsu and Supernote who has like 15 pens in their lineup. You know, Remarkable could do something as small as that Little production runs of these, you know, uh, uh, low cost items with huge profit margin accessories and just add on to all their devices, give people a whole list of things they could buy. But instead, they're just charging for this, you know, arbitrary list of things you're allowed to do on their units now. Keep in mind, Remarkable is still the only company that has tilt recognition where you could, ah, do, you could draw yes. You could you you could like shade on you know basically Correct. most styluses when you draw your you know no your, one has it you're right exactly you're just yeah. drawing like on the screen like do to do to do to do with the with the you know with the other pen it's right. like you could like tilt it on its side to do shading right. or to do like oh, here, things and and no other e reader or e note has that capability there something is something is like you know is tilting I'll give you guys a little a really easy way to understand it. Every pen on the market does that. It only transmits forward. Remarkable transmits like that. It has an angle. So you can tilt your pen and it will do something different. But that really only works for like, I think the pencil and the paintbrush and anything else doesn't really matter. And yeah, you make a good point, but is that enough of a reason? Not really. So I say, yeah, your idea with the, the templates and make some new pens, bring back some pens, stop discontinuing your old stuff that was super good. That would be a way smarter move and maybe make a new unit. Like um, I think someone said here on the, uh, George Lemaitier said they should make an incredible Remarkable 3 with better firmware. And then maybe we'd all pay for it because it have a lot of stuff I could justify paying for. Yeah, so uh, here's yeah. some other remarkable news that we haven't reported on yet, but because it's a story that's developing. Uh, so we've heard from many sources close to remarkable, not remarkable themselves, but close to like them and, and the industry like in general, that um, remarkable is shopping around their company to prospectively oh, yeah. sell it. So, uh, I, you know, I can't mention our sources and stuff, of course, but uh, more than a few people have told me that Remarkable is shopping their entire business around to hopefully sell it either to like um, 
you know, like a company that bought Nook, like KKR, like a hedge fund company. They're, you know, they're approaching non-conventional businesses in the e-reader market. It's not like they're going to sell to Amazon or, or Kobo or something like that. They're, they're looking to sell it to a non-established player in the market, uh, primarily because they're running out of money. Um, they've raised like about 70 million since they started and the last uh, investment round they did was like in 2019 where they raised like an extra 30 million and that was pretty well to facilitate the design and construction of the Remarkable 2. Yeah. So every time that they have like new devices, they raise money in order to design it, uh, to do like an initial factory run, and then they take pre-orders or crowdfunding campaigns to basically take that money do like a batch of like a thousand to put that the thing and then take it, you know, take everyone's money and then do another production run of a thousand, ship right. them. And so that, that creates like a three or four month delay from when you place your order to when you actually get it. And speaking of that, uh, Remarkable is facing like a stock shortage right now. And that's primarily attributed to the global uh, EPD yeah. shortage, the electronic paper display shortage, as well as the mineral shortage, aluminum, zinc, and then, and then uh, the, the power outages. Yeah, the power outages in Japan, uh, or sorry, in China. So uh, um, people have placed orders four months ago and still haven't got uh -huh. them yet. So Remarkable is just like, it's just one thing after another that's facing yeah. them. Like they're, they're taking everyone's money that wants to order something, but they're physically not shipping them out for like over three months from now, or or in some cases, four months. Like they're not shipping Remarkable 2 units out to people. If you order yeah. some nibs or something, you're more likely to get them, or a stylus, you're more likely to get them pretty fast. But if you're actually ordering a Remarkable 2 plus accessories, they're not gonna ship it until like yeah. after Christmas, uh, it looks like to like February of like next year. So um, it's and, just uh, one thing after uh, another. Uh, yeah, no, it's it's everything snowballing all at the same time. And uh, anyone that placed in August, since August to now, which is almost November, they have sent out and we're on their list and we talked to them um, and they sent out one email that that's it the whole time that says uh, we are doing our best to get the units landed and shipped to you. But yeah, it's been it's been months and there's nothing on the horizon as to when they're getting them. As you know, we service, uh, you know, like super small areas with the remarkable, like Marshall islands and St. Kitts and Nevis or however you pronounce that. So we have a little bit of a stockpile that we have just as a kind of emergency to help our clients. If they need a remarkable, they can't get one. And uh, we've been waiting for our shipment. Um, and this is like first name basis kind of thing with remarkable. We've been waiting for ours since September. So the beginning of September, still absolutely no idea when we're getting anything. So uh, yeah, the, we did a video on this as well, the whole delay situation. Um, people that have more priority, like you know the, the uh, Onyx and Pocketbook and the guys that are just big scale that order a lot of units, manufacturers that print off a production run are more likely to sell to them than the smaller players. So that's just sums that up. So yeah, if you're waiting on something from a smaller player, you know, boy use, super note, et cetera, you can be waiting a while because no one's getting anything. Yeah, even like the Fujitsu Quaderno line that came out like a couple, right. like about a month ago or two months ago now. Um, they they are you know there's the, every every single distributor like like you know in Japan that's not you know Fujitsu doesn't sell these directly. They rely on distributors like Big Camera and like other like uh, other yeah uh, other brands whether they sell it in a store or whether they just sell it online. Every single distributor in Japan's like sold out of it. And we heard that uh, more Fujitsu's will be available like around the second or third week of November. And that's generally with most companies that are sold out. So uh, Super Note, uh, their 10.3 inch is sold out. It's been sold out for a couple of months. Same thing, EPD, uh, mineral shortage. Uh, they are just sold out. Like. Um, the only people who aren't, well, I mean, even Kobo sold out of the Sage. Right? Yeah, yeah. So that's like, like, oh, and actually, Mike, I just found this out today. Amazon Oasis 3, 32 gigs, they're gone in, in, in the markets that we have access to. So if you're like uh, Amazon Italy or UK or something, um, you may have access to that choice, but there's no more Oasis 32 gigs right now. You can only just get the eights. So yeah. So even Amazon, like the yeah. EPD shortage cannot be understated about 
how this is affecting the industry. So just to give you guys like a like a primer. So E Inc is probably the company that's responsible for supplying like 97% of all e readers and e notes. <laughs> the, the actual yeah. display screens, the front lit display system, the capacitive like interaction, anything to do with like the EPDs. Like they're responsible for making and then they sell them like on a volume discount to like companies. So, you know, Amazon will buy 500,000 of them, yeah. you know, um, so e -Ink has one huge factory in China. I can't pronounce like the name. It's like Yang Zabo or something. Um, they oh, have yeah. one we have one factory in uh, Taiwan and uh, they have one factory outside of uh, Boston in Massachusetts. Now these factories are very small, the ones in Taiwan and the States. It has a single production line and that's With it. one guy. He's yeah, like... whereas like in China, <laughs> they, have, they have like eight production lines with like yeah. hundreds of people. But uh, due to COVID, uh, due to restrictions, uh, of that and stuff yeah. due to like the power outages and stuff they yeah it's basically they can't even make displays anymore at that factory and that's their largest factory that supplies everybody so given that that they can't um, make really anything there and the stuff that they have made they have to actually get professionally cleaned like by disinfectants by like yeah. government and government inspectors so that is that and like the the zinc and mineral shortage due to like just other extenuating factors like in japan there's not enough power at, or there's not enough you know mining uh capabilities right now and this the, the countries that used to supply them with that uh for example australia it, Australia used to like send a crap ton of coal to China, uh, but there's some trade war and embargo and there's a lot of yeah. words going back and forth. So uh, Australia is not sending coal to China. And so that's why that they're having power outages and stuff now because they don't have enough domestic coal production to power their entire country. They don't really, ha they never really invested that hard into like renewable energies, certainly not enough to power like mm -hmm. all their industrial centers and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. They're still a coal nation. So yeah. yeah, I mean, suffice to say all of that affects smaller players, but it also affects like Kobo, it affects Amazon. Um, you know, like the Tolino Vision 6, for example, they told me when they talked to me that they were planning on doing their version of the Sage. Yeah. But there right. was not enough screens and, and devices yeah. to, to rationalize a launch. They would have only had like 50 of them. So they would have been able to announce something, but they wouldn't be able to generate any type of meaningful revenue to actually sell that something. And yeah. that's affected everybody this year. Everybody had plans for multiple new devices. Kobo had plans for more than two e-readers this year, yeah. like the Sage and the Libra 2. They had plans to redo the Forma, and they had plans to do the a new version of the Clara, but um, there's not enough components to be able to do that. So right. no, the smaller companies could only do one or two this year when they have plans to double that. Uh, a lot of plans, uh, you know, by other companies that didn't release anything this year, they had plans to release stuff this year. They just simply can't. So the EPG shortage is creating supply constraint issues for like Remarkable and like Boyu and like all the smaller players and even the bigger players are susceptible to this as well. It's not a matter of there's so much demand that they're just completely unavailable. It's just that they never really had enough allocated to them to begin with. It's not like Amazon had enough paper whites. Uh, uh, to sell uh, or say, Kobo had enough sages yeah. to sell. They only had, I mean, I can't speculate exactly how many they had, but it wasn't very much. If, if they were sold out in pre-orders just on Kobo.com for America and Canada um, in like li literally under two weeks and now they don't have any, that tells a pretty big story. And to, to, to basically add onto everything mike said companies don't want to not sell you something <laughs> that's not what's happening here people the companies want you to buy stuff because then they make money they don't want to say oh rats i don't you know i don't get to ship my customer something no no they want to sell it to you for example when we get a bunch of orders and people are like where's my order it's like it, we don't have stuff right now because we're trying to get it. It does not benefit you, doesn't benefit us, doesn't benefit 
anybody for us not to send you something. We are doing absolutely, we're doing double time. We don't take holidays here at Goody Reader. We give people holidays, of course, but we have shifts so that- I don't take holidays. <laughs> I haven't taken yeah. a, ho- a holiday in like six years. Yeah. Like I haven't got, even before COVID, it's like yeah. I wasn't taking a two week holiday and going right. to like Hawaii or to like Barbados or something like that. It's like literally from like, you know, from sunrise to sunset, it's like I live and breathe e-readers. Right. Whether, we, yeah. So, you know, I, don't, I just don't get the opportunity to do it. Whereas, like, you know, some people have more cash, like, work schedules and stuff. Like, right. me, and, me and Peter, or Peter and I are, like, the hardest workers here. Out of everybody who writes for us, with, like, our other writers, our editors, our authors, the other people who help with, like, B and, like, A-roll, help develop scripts, like, all of our graphics artists, all of our programmers, you know, they take vacations, you know, they don't work weekends, you know, they have a lot of liberal time schedules, but, like, you know, Sadly, like we don't because right. if, if we're not if we're not producing content on a daily basis or writing, you know, compelling articles and stuff, um, you know, people will go to other websites to right. like, read about yeah. this type of stuff. I should rephrase that. People don't come into the office and you know, we start whipping you if you're late. Uh, everyone gets holidays, uh, you know, maternity leave. Everyone. Well, like, oh, not you. you know, <laughs> Yeah, okay. The full-blown holidays, yeah, but we never let goody readers sleep, basically. There's a lot of companies that have, for example, China has a lot of holidays. So we get these um, uh, blasts from all our distributors that are like, oh, we're doing the lunar lunar year. And it's like, do your thing for sure. But that's like, you know, 11 days off. So Goody Lantern never- Festival, yeah. like Dragon Like Boat Festival. Yeah. And a lot of these like overlap. So some yeah. of these companies haven't been in the office for three weeks. Yeah. And Goody so Reader does not stop the company because we can't. We can't stop our sales division. We can't stop our news publication, our video production, our customer service. In fact, because of the time of year, we have added about 10 people just to customer service. Those people we mentioned before, we get a corporate Goody Reader login so that they log in with their access to answer chats, uh, send people shipping updates, stuff like that. Because we need to get everyone all of their stuff as much as possible. We know you guys place super note orders. We know you guys place Fujitsu orders. The guy in the shipping department doesn't just go, oh, this is great. No, no, we're trying to get the stuff, talk to Fujitsu, get stuff landed so that everyone can get their stuff in their hands, get review samples so Mike and his team can do reviews and, and comprehensive stories on all this stuff. Nobody wants to not service you. We are doing everything we can, given everything Michael said, the huge amount of just overlapping delays in all of the major core places and players that are affected by this. So if you guys have any questions, you can call us, you can email us, you can Facebook message us. Uh, I'm manning the phones too. If you message, I see the chats on my phone. Mike has them pop up. And sometimes we're like, oh yeah, your order's coming soon. So we're all here and we're we're full force. So um, we're yeah, trying I mean, to give everybody... Mm-hmm their stuff this isn't just like about us but it's like just because kobo was like sold out of the sage doesn't mean that they're like all right you know more coming you know we'll just like go into the office and like basically sleep for a couple weeks you know they're they're scrambling um so you know an interesting thing about the new libra and the sage in terms of sourcing components kobo i i talked to uh the kobo guy get his name it's in the article that i wrote but it was basically um the vp of like devices at kobo so he's in charge of all the kobo like hardware like and future hardware so it's like you know they have like a two-year roadmap of things that they're going to be making in two years so what they told me is that due to the supply constraints just in general they had to do business with like like quadruple the amount of companies that they did business with in the past. Like uh, just to give you guys a sense, like Kobo used to just basically design their e-readers and Netronics would source all the components. They would do all the manufacturing. They would do the FCC like applications on their behalf. But during the pandemic, that's not possible. So they basically Mm -hmm. had to source the screens themselves, the batteries themselves, the touchscreen layers, you know, the CPU, they had to source all the components themselves and find out, you know, do you have this many? Do you have this many? Do you have this many? Okay, you have this, 
you have the rest okay we'll do business with two different companies and send it to electronics so that's like that's the type of like microcosm of yeah. the supply constraints you know and why things are just out of stock right now it's not demand it's just physically there's not enough things to go around and the people that are you know so basically e-ink is almost charging double now for the same things that they used to charge a single rate yeah. for that's just because like you know companies like amazon they have unlimited budgets they can afford to pay whatever they want same with kobo nice. Bar barnes and noble to a lesser degree mm -hmm. i mean mm -hmm. anything that e -Ink charges to these bigger companies like they they could they could eat the cost whereas smaller companies if they suddenly that this the, you know the prices of all this everything goes up they can't afford it anymore or if they can they can only do 50 units instead of 500 units because right. those 50 units cost as much as like 200 units in, in today's like sense so it's like to give you just simplify the math um say me uh, peter and i are going to release a new e-reader um and the old prices that we paid we can afford to like just fork out 200 units and they'll ship it to us with the new rates it's like we can do about like 100 uh, or less for the same price as it would have taken to like pay for 300 devices so that's to kind of give you a sense about how much uh, the scarcity has inflated the prices and that's no more more evident than uh video cards if you're in the market for like a new nvidia or amd video card like the rtx 3000 line um this whole entire year they've been like virtually unavailable the only way that you're going to get them is to pay scalper prices and you're paying like three times over msrp like i paid a scalper price because i just needed a new video card because my old one died and i didn't want to get like a generation prior so a video card costs 699 us and i paid 1200 us for it so i basically paid double like the msrp uh more including shipping and stuff but that just shows you that the scarcity is just to apply to e-readers it's like oh, tablets man. it's everything it's, 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 it's like it's, it's, yeah it's everything man yeah so, it's it's uh it's it's everything that requires computer chips which literally everything requires computer chips so used cars are selling more than new cars. Uh, video cards are doubles in price. Uh, there was a Nintendo Switch shortage between January and April of this year where Switches were going 100 maybe $200 over MSRP. It's anything that requires computer chips. But uh, e-readers are even worse because it's niche. And e-ink is the only company that supplies all this stuff except for top joy and re-ink stone with their little des things coming from weifeng in china but none of those even seem real so it's like we have no choice in the matter we'll have to talk about those guys another day but um yeah everything's e-ink everything from the panels the epd electronic paper display these little things that have the little you know uh, the little flat cable that goes onto the circuit board those all come from e-ink no one else makes those just e-ink so if someone says i want 10,000 7.8s all the other guys that can't afford 10,000 7.8s aren't going to get their stuff that's what it comes down to so yeah so um in any case uh so the products that i'm excited for um that are coming out like within the next like couple of weeks uh the lumi 2 and the paperwhite 5 signature edition those are the two that we but that we don't have now that i'm excited about so uh if you want to learn more about these devices uh we have like write-ups on our website you can check out uh products will go live for pre-orders uh for the onyx ones on the 27th uh but this week uh like this coming week you should at least start to see unboxings of the new lumi and the note air uh the note 5 is delayed in terms of like you know they're not they haven't sent it out for us yet but we should get it like in a couple weeks or so um once they actually finish with like the new firmware flashing mm -hmm. on it some you know general maintenance and stuff like that so yeah i mean it's going to be busy for us. So like, if you guys like e-readers and e-notes, um, the next like month is just going to be like nonstop unboxings, reviews, comparisons, bid, 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 bid. Um, yeah. So and like, we're yeah. giving away better and bigger stuff. As you see, this is one of our biggest contests. We're giving away a $700, uh, big me. And that's a color Kaleido 2 e-ink note-taking slate. It is on 
our site right now. We are giving that away absolutely for free. We've actually had a lot of previous contest winners, three in fact. They're all kind of uh, answering your questions for us. They're like, oh, you won a goodie reader contest last month. How much did you pay to your country? What's this? Is it sweepstakes? Is it labeled as a commercial item? Because we know that a lot of your guys' countries, if you live in Chile or if you live in like, you know, Switzerland or something, your VAT and your tax might be kind of high. That's why we value the item really low, which is completely lawful because it is a sweepstakes item. You didn't buy this from us. And we'll try our best to get this landed in your hands because it is, it's a way for us to give back. And we don't want our way to give back to come at a financial cost to you guys paying DHL $110. So enter the contest if you want a bigger chance. That's where Mike mentioned we do have the, uh, the payment program. Uh, there's no special videos or anything, but you do get a bunch of bonus stuff and you get 10 times the entries, which is worth it on its own because I think out of the last five contests or so, two have been paid members because it, it I don't know what the word is for quadruple or double, but the 10 times version of that multiplier, it, it, uh, it increases your chances. And that is the only way to increase your chances. Don't spam the comments because that's not the way to do it. Our tech guys will shut that down and they don't like that. So uh, everyone needs a fair share at winning this because we know we have a lot of students, a lot of people studying. We want to get all of our free stuff in the hands to everyone as, as best we can. Uh, yeah, so um, that's it for now. Uh, we've yep. definitely like fixated like pretty heavily on the EPD shortage, but that's just because like- It's important, man, you're people, right. It's people, people wonder why things are sold out. Is it demand? Is it what? Is it the other thing? It's like, at least you guys know now um, why this is like happening across the entire e-reader industry. So yeah. um, we're really excited about like, you know, Onyx probably won't have any scarcity because like they, they have their own factories. Pocket so um, super stable right yeah. now. Yeah, there, yeah. there's a few brands that are heavily stable right now. That's just because they have their own factories or they, mm -hmm. you know, they're doing it at factories that actually have all this stuff there. So um, Kindle new, Kindle reviews, unboxings this week. Mm -hmm. uh, Lumi 2, Nova Air, I mean, Note Air 2 this week. So, I mean, the next few weeks, check our website for all the written reviews, uh, first looks, uh, check our YouTube channel for like all the actual video stuff. Um, yeah, I mean, this is a great time to be alive. There's a lot of really cool stuff coming out in Q4. So we're going to be uh, doing our best to do all these devices justice. Um, we're a promise. We're not going to be burned out by like all the reviewing all these devices because it's it's a lot all at once. You know, it takes a lot of time and energy to like do yeah. reviews. You know, as you guys know, like if you've been watching our channel for a while, incrementally, like our videos have been doing. You know, in in terms of production quality, have done you know gotten better and better and better. That's just because we used to spend. 30 minutes on a video and uh, editing in it and, and uploading it all in the same day. Now, like it takes us like three days to like shoot yeah. a video, to edit it, to do all like the cool stuff. Um, basically it just makes our videos just, you know, better than anyone else's. A little, it, it, little bit, yeah. Yeah, so it's just, it's a different way we're going about it. We're always investing in new cameras and new hardware and new lighting systems and stuff. Um, Trying to supply yeah. more jobs to people that do scripting. And, uh, and and since we've been, since we hired some people on scripting, um, the, the wording of our videos have been better. I deliver a lot of them, but uh, the wording has been, you know, we, we tell little stories and stuff, have those little segments where we, you know, pace our, our talking and stuff. It's not just a static uh, bird's eye view of me just ranting and rambling. Um, we do definitely have people on scripting that have uh, histories, um, backgrounds in writing. I know Michael made a few hires for people like that. Like this guy's, you know, word choice is very good, much better than my own. And uh, it's just, it, it's, it's looking a lot better with, you know, we're creating jobs, creating opportunities for people and just getting more people uh, in the, um, in the process of everything. So um, yeah. And if, if, if any of our listeners want to work for Goody Reader, um, what... Steve was just saying that this guy right here, I'm not kidding. He's like, I'm in the... Steve Prosser was like, I'm in the Vancouver area. Can I drop off a, uh, off a um uh resume and i was like i think we're good but then darren chimed in he's like you never know so it's, it's just funny yeah i mean primarily we're looking for like customer service uh we're looking for like people to help like mom 
moderate YouTube, uh, you know, just like things yeah. that are like easy to do and they're considered sort of entry level positions. But if you do well under there, um, you know, we could obviously the sky's the limit about how far you can raise like in the company. Right. So we, we, we definitely could always use more people, especially writers that actually have like a writing portfolio that want to write about e-readers. We could always like, you know, do like something like that. I mean, new voices, new perspectives, uh, a new vocabulary, um, just things like that really enhance like our online news website. So thanks for watching everybody. We're going to bid you adieu for now, but uh, Don Cachet and uh, Godspeed you Black Emperor. Thank you guys for all sticking with us.